Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi, y'all. So, what we're talking about today is what does WordPress do? Which seems like a weird question in this room. Uh, but I get it all the time, generally, as a follow up to what, the question of what do you do for a living? And I have nothing good to offer for you in that situation. If you give the answer I'm about to give you at your cousin's wedding, you are wrong and you should feel bad. But we're WordPress developed. WordPress, we make plugins, themes, websites. Yes? So if we could all do a five minute install and have a perfect WordPress site, all of us would be out of a job and there'd be no WordCamp Orlando. So this is good. The more that we understand, the better we can have like a job and stuff. We can make themes, plugins, websites. So our question today is how do we get from this? No matter what you type into a front end request from WordPress, this is where it starts. This is index.php, right? We have two lines of executable code here. To find whether or not we're using themes, require the blog header. That's it. This is where it all starts, and we end up here or somewhere. Who here has had somebody say to them, I got this WordPress site, it has a page called about, I logged it, I FTP'd into the server, I can't find about. We've had this conversation, right? Because there is no about, there is no hello world on your server, but it exists magically. By the way, if I was more clever, I would have done this entire thing in Harry Potter, but I know enough about Harry Potter to understand why this is funny. That's about it. Um, but the challenge here is not blow by blow, but five things we can discuss that happen before we get to this. And somebody here is going to say, Josh, this is single.php. It's calling get header, get sidebar, get footer. We're not getting that far. We're talking about before that. How does WordPress know that this is hello world and that I need gets, I need single.php? Okay. So just five things. It's going to take us like 20 minutes, like five minutes a thing, right? Four minutes a thing. I think we can do that. Um, and the point here is to get superpowers, right? Uh, I, I don't know any Harry Potter uh, for you, but I'm really into sci-fi. And we know from science fiction that things that are sufficiently advanced appear to be magic. And a lot of us, myself included, get started with WordPress, and we don't know how it is that hello world is a thing that happens. So it becomes magic. And the sooner that we learn how to figure out why it's that and how to change that, the better we can do at our jobs. And we have a cool idea for a plugin. We can make that plugin because we know where to look to figure out how. We know how to do this weird thing that our clients say. Clients is great. But I needed to do this, this, and this. And you say WordPress doesn't do that, but I can make it do that. Right? And then you charge them money. So let's talk briefly about hooks. Um, Right? A hook is an event. At some point, WordPress says, hey, we're here. Who wants in? Signals the alarm. So just imagine WordPress is going along and saying, we're at WP head. Anyone? We're at WP footer. We're at the content. Anyone? Anyone? Right? We have actions. We do something. We take some action. In WordPress, in a plugin, in a theme, do action something. We hook into it, an action, something, right? What action are we doing? What are we doing? This is our callback function. We're echoing something, right? This is just going to make when something happens, we echo do something. That's it. An action is a time to do something. Filters, we change something, right? Apply filters something. Something is the default, right? So if nobody hooks into this filter, we return something. That's it. But because we've hooked in, we're able to modify this variable here. We're able to say something equals something else. Return something. So now wherever this output, we see something else. I like to tell the joke, and I told you yesterday that I walked in and my dog Hobbs was on the couch, laying, and I cut it off on a pillow. I went into the kitchen, I came back into the living room, and my dog Josie's on the couch. She applied a filter to the couch to return Josie. I don't know how it happened, but he was in the corner. He got bullied by his little sister. Right, and you've seen all this before, right? How, how does like the Jetpack share functionality go? Puts those little buttons at the bottom. It hooks into the content, 
and it appends to the content a share button, right? This is a way oversimplified version of that. And that returns the content. We do this all the time. If we want to echo JavaScript in the bottom of our, uh, you know, in, in WP head, right? So there, we echo this script. That way when anybody opens it, it says alert, con, right? Um, my slides are on my site. You go to joshpress.net. You look at my Twitter, which is uh, josh412. The last tweet was links to this. This is all pseudo code, but there's some helpful links there. So our question again is what does WordPress do? Let's avoid the back end. Let's, let's avoid admin Ajax. Let's avoid the REST API. I know that's what I normally talk about at WordCamps. This is a fun break for me. Um, so what does WordPress do in the front end? It takes a URL string, but we've all seen old school PHP applications, other sorts of server side applications where you go to a URL and it's got this really long string of get variables. Question mark, something equals something, and something else equals something else, right? WordPress works exactly the same way. If you don't have pretty permalinks installed, you go to P equals 23, and WordPress figures out that that's post 23. Right, we have pretty permalinks for lots of obvious reasons. And as a result, WordPress needs to be able to translate that back to P equals 23. So that way it can do a query for post 23. So say post type equals products, page equals two. I need products, page two. I want everybody right now to grab a copy of WordPress on your phone, on your computer, because go to github.com slash WordPress dot WordPress slash WordPress. You don't have a, your laptop in front of you. Because the most important thing is to read the source. This is where you get your superpowers. Because I'm going to give you five things to learn. There's a lot more in WordPress. WordPress core is so readable. A lot of work, a lot of volunteer hours went into documenting every single hook in WordPress. Every single function. So when you find it, you can say, Oh, it tells me right here I have these parameters passed. This is a short description of what it does. Here's a long description of what it does. The sooner you get to solving your problems by reading the source, figuring out where it is with some find and finding in your IDE and in the finder, Windows search, whatever that is, um, the, the sooner you'll be able to use the source. It will become the force. I promise superpowers. The force is a superpower. So, five events, init, init stands for initialized. WordPress is loaded. This is located in class wp.php, wp includes. Has anybody ever read this class? One person, two people? Mikey, you've never read this class? This is a fascinating class. It's called WP, right? It's short for WordPress, by the way. This is like where WordPress does its WordPress, right? This fires when WordPress is loaded. There are a bunch of related actions that happen before and after, right? So it goes through. We fire, fire moo plugins loaded. When do we fire that? After moo plugins are loaded. So if you want to use something that's in a moo plugin, you have to wait until moo plugins loaded. Plugins loaded. It happens after plugins are loaded. So let's say, for instance, that you have a theme a site that is totally dependent on WooCommerce being a thing. Well, there's a lot of scenarios in which WooCommerce becomes deactivated, right? The, it gets updated wrong, the, file, the folder never exists, right? So a really great thing to do is to check and see if class WC, whatever it is, not a WooCommerce guy, exists. And if so, switch to a base theme that just says, sorry, we're broken. Even better, send yourself an email, right? But you could do that at plugins loaded. If you do it any earlier, of course it doesn't exist. It hasn't been loaded yet. Set up theme. That's what happens when your theme is set up. After set up theme. Guesses? All right, WordPress code is, is very readable. We get to init, and then everything is initialized. Right after init is WP loaded. Most of the time init works. So these are really useful functions. Um, by the way, it's not in class WP. Where is it? It's in, right, that's copy-paste error. Where is it? I'll correct the slides on my site. Class WP is the next set. 
Anyway, request is actually in class WP. WP is this really cool class that does WordPress. Happens after in it. And because now we have like plugins and, and filters that are plugins and themes that have added filters, right? Now everything's loaded. WordPress is loaded. New plugins are loaded. Themes are loaded. And what, it, what is this class going to do? It's going to figure out where are we, right? This isn't querying the database. We're going to get to that in a bit. This is figuring out what would we query? Where are we? It sets up our query variables, right? In the sense that the traditional web app has old school, has all those get, strip, get variables in the URL. In WordPress, we have query variables which are representations of those. But they can come from anywhere. Right, so this modifies the query before WP query is a thing, right? Eventually, WP query is going to happen. It's gonna figure out, oh, this is an author page. So I need all posts that are for author with this username, right? Before we get there, we have to construct those query bars. Query vars are very useful because they are available to us. We do get query var. The WP query uh, object, which is global, is going to have all these query variables in it. So, what happens if we want to change the query variables? We can use request. It's a filter. It returns all of our query vars. So, if we want to change the query variables because there's something special about this one archive that our client needs, that's where we can do it. We want to do something when a query variable is there. This is our first opportunity to do it. Um, parse request happens next. It's an action. So if we don't need to change anything, uh, that's a little bit safer to use. Send headers. Send headers is a really neat one. Right? PHP sends out all these headers that are read by the browser. Has anybody ever got a headers already sent error? Right? Well, because something went wrong before, after headers were sent. And it got interpreted as a header, right? Because you can only send headers once. So what happens if you want to send your own headers? You better do it before send headers. The best way to do it is with the filter WP headers. Whatever this returns, WordPress is going to loop through and output properly formatted PHP headers that can be read in the HTTP request. So. You want extra information that's available on client side? WP headers is excellent. Um, cross origin domain headers, for example. WordPress is every time going to send a cross origin domain header that's going to prevent other sites from hooking into your site to pull content. That might not be good. For instance, you're writing some sort of custom API very quickly to give out a license key. You want that to be accessible to any site but you want it only to be accessible to that site. Luckily, this happens after query bars are set. You can figure out what type of query it is. Query string. It's a neat filter. Remember we keep talking about this query string that's going to assemble to pass the WP query? It's right there, a query string. We want to change it. That's one way to do it. Pre-get posts. Guesses? When this runs? Yes, before we get posts, right? This is in WP includes query. WP includes query.php include is the file for WP query, right? It's got all those sort of like helper functions. There are aliases, is page, is post. Those are actually functions that are aliasing from the current WP query argument. So when you look at them, their source is returning WP query it is post. Um, so this is your opportunity before there is a WP query that's like hit the database and stuff, to say on search results, I want to include post types that are products, special offers, you know, book authors for my book site, right? Because a search query, by default, you do like WordPress search, it only looks in posts. It doesn't look in any of your custom post types. Pre get posts, you can just change the query. This exposes the, this is an action, but it exposes the global WP query, so you can actually change it there. It's a little weird. Um, this is where you're going to say, 
I'm using this taxon. I'm going to apply categories to my product, to my event. I want them to be part of my events. Uh, right when I got my taxonomy, my categories, I need that to show posts and events. This is where you're going to do it. You're modifying the query before query. So it's sort of in this liminal state of we have these arguments that we can pass to WP Query to do a database query, but we haven't done it yet. There's some really neat stuff in WP Query in the actual class that we can use. Start loop. This runs at the beginning of the loop. Um, end loop. Right? We do this all the time. We do if have posts, the post. Right? We keep looping through this. Once eventually have posts returns false. Because we had 10 posts and we're on we're trying to go to post eleven. There is an eleventh post. That's when we fire end loop. You want to fire in action, you want to do something every time we get to the end of our WP query loop? End loop. When you look in WP query, the actual right after pre get posts starts doing a lot of, of SQL, right? Starts writing based on all these conditions a really long SQL query. Most of those along the way have a filter on them. So if you're a SQL person and you want to modify the the SQL statement, you have all these opportunities based on various conditions to modify your modify your SQL. Maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. On a custom site, whatever works. Whatever's gonna la whatever's gonna make your site work for your client. And instead of writing a custom SQL argument that who knows why that's there, you're hooking into one very specific filter that's only applying to one place. But you still have two very cool safeties at the end of this process. The posts and the post. Right? When you do WP query po the posts, it's got an array of posts. We can modify it with the filter the posts. When we call the post, like the specific one in the loop, we can filter it here. Remember that we don't have to use filters to modify anything. We can just use filters to read things and do other stuff. Which, as long as we return the same thing, it has no effect. But we can use them to feed conditionals. Okay, that's three. I promise five. You'll notice there's a lot of bonuses here. Bonus content. Give, give people more than they expect. They'll keep coming back. I hope to see you in work camp. Well, I don't know what next time I'm doing a work camp is. Doc, but I, I've exceeded your expectations already. I offered five. We're at like 15. Um, WP includes template slash template.php is really neat stuff. I even if you look at my Instagram, it's about 85, 90% photos of my dogs and cats. Um, but every now and then I take a screenshot of something cool, like some cool code. And one of the first things I did was this file. Because I never read it before. It's really kind of neat because this is the template hierarchy. It's in that file. Template.php, if you're looking at it, is template redirect, this big loop that's the template hierarchy, and then template includes at the bottom. We'll talk to you in a second. Before we choose a template, this is functionally possible to modify what template is selected. Don't do it. Wait, wait, give me two minutes, two minutes, we'll talk about, about how to do that. This is when you don't want to use a template. Right, because by the way, we have a query. We have a WP query here. We have results from WP query. So you can do things like is page. Is page 21? Is 404? Right? These sorts of things are available to you now at template redirect. And it might be that you don't want a theme here. Because of the nature of this, we want to redirect to another site based on what the current query is. We want to throw a 301 redirect. We're using this as an API. Custom API, these sorts of things. A template redirect is where we're to say we could load the template, but instead we're doing something else, right? Because you know we can add a redirect and exit, right? This is basically where your opportunity to say this is not the template you're looking for, right? You've created this page as sort of a landing area, and but you know it's never going to show that page. It's never going to be a page on PHP. You want it to go to a third-party site. Right there. Do 
this to WordPress, a template that redirect. Then the template hierarchy happens. Um, and you see this cat here? Basically, if you're reading the template hierarchy right now, which you should be, it's very fascinating. It's this big loop that says, is this single? Is this page? No, no, no. It's not as cute because it's not a cat. It's like a PHP control structure. But, um, which I, like, I think it's very well done. And I don't want to dispute it, but it's not a cat going. Like, that's a high bar. Anyway, and what it does is it says, okay, we're there. And it calls another function that returns a filter, a location for a, for a template. Right? It tries to return single.php. Of course, single.php might not exist. So then it returns index.php. Index we could do an entire 45 minutes on the template hierarchy, but read it. It's pretty neat um, how it works. It's a bunch of, of conditionals. Template includes. At some point in that loop, it's going to come up with the path for a template, which it's going to include. At template includes. But, right, every theme to be valid has to have an index.php. That could be it. So it's going to figure out index.php is my answer, or single.php, page.php, whatever that is. Category 38.php. Templates includes, by the way, there's a thousand filters in between there that we skipped over. There's one for every specific use case um, that you can use. Read them, they're in the source. Click through them. PHP Storm users, people who are here from Micah's talk that are now convinced of PHP Storm, he's right. Use PHP Storm. One of the coolest things about PHP Storm is you command click on a function and it shows you the source. Really helpful when you're looking at something like the template hierarchy. Um, so template includes, gives you a path to a thing. So let's say you want to have a plugin that has its own default, has its own defaults for uh, templates but you want it to be overridable in the, by, by somebody has that in their title. Let's call this like WooCommerce, for example, right? They do this, this is very smart, that they have a default template for everything, but if you have it in your child theme or theme, then it uses yours. This is a great architecture. Template includes. If we're in the context where we would use one of our, one of, you know, your plugins, custom templates, but they've gone to index because they don't have their own. Use the one for your plug. If they've used the one of, the, of their own that would override it, but it pass. Right? So change the template hierarchy. Right? We wanted Homer because we're on the Simpsons. Screw it. Bender. I don't know why Bender. But we're on, we're on Futurama now. This is what we're doing at this point. We're modifying what should be happening. Bender shouldn't be in this, but it's a filter. We can add Bender. Um, I've talked a lot about my pets, so for no, no other reason, Gus, Shy, Josie, Pops. They're cute. Um, there's a photo of space in the background. This is the most important slide. Actually, this is the most important slide. Read the source, Luke. This whole thing was really like a, uh, an undercover uh, experiment to get you into the idea of look in the source. Figure out where this stuff is. Figure out what's near it. If you are in the codex, the best part about the codex is it tells you where that function is located. If you can't find it, go to the codex, figure out where it is, and then go back to the source. The new developer handbook makes it very easy to click through to track. It shows you the source. It's very nice. It's a great, uh, great resource. Just keep looking at the source because you're going to learn what WordPress does. That's what I said was the point of this talk. What does WordPress do? We all have jobs because we know what WordPress does. We find our place in this world where we know like, a lot about what WordPress does here. The more that you know, the better work that you can do. The more of those requests where somebody says, I need WordPress to do this, and you say, well, technically it doesn't, but for X number of dollars, it could. And you, right? So you can be a superpower person. The thing about lightsabers is that in the hands of a non-Jedi, they're more dangerous to the wielder than to the person that's attacking them. But when you have superpowers, you can use this awesome tool to fight with a, like the most elegant uh, weapon from a more civilized age. <laughs> my name is Josh Pollock. Uh, CalderaWP.com is my company. We make a drag and drop responsive form builder. Uh, we're doing an A-B testing uh, plugin called, called Ingot at A Ingot HQ. 
You can find me at Twitter, Josh412, joshpress.net. I really appreciate all of y'all coming out and, and hearing me speak. It really means a ton to me. Thank y'all. You're awesome. Questions? 42? got to get early. Yes. You're correct. It's right before request. Scroll up. Go to request and scroll up. Do parse request. Do your own custom thing there and die. Do your request, not you. I, hope, I, I, I wish you a very long life. All requests must die. Michelle, can you make that t-shirt? Let's talk about this later. I've wanted this t-shirt forever. Um, right, all requests must die. I mean, you, you and I also must die too, right? Eventually, it's an unfortunate part of life. Unless you're immortal, I don't know you. I am mortal. I will die. But yeah, parse request is a great time because you do have the URL. You have some basic stuff there. And then do your own thing and, you know, die or exit or whatever. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.